Hello, welcome back to the channel, and today, after a little while, it's been a while since I've done this, but I have another blood bag for you, for Ghostbusters The Frozen Empire. So, um, last night I saw this film, and this is the latest Ghostbusters film, this is the fifth one, um, obviously it's a sequel to Afterlife. Now, I have a lot of thoughts about this movie, um, a lot of good and a lot of bad. So let's just delve right into it. So this movie takes place two years after Afterlife and takes place in New York, just like the first two. As the new Ghostbusters, which is the this, the Spangler family alongside uh, Paul Rudd's character, who I already fucking forgot the name of. So, and this movie revolves around them trying to maintain the firehouse and continue the ghost busting job in New York. When suddenly a man brings in, brings to Ray Stance, the, one of the original Ghostbusters, a orb containing a, a evil ice ghost god. And obviously it breaks out and just wreaks havoc. And the Ghostbusters have to put a stop to it. So, um, yeah. Note, if you don't want spoilers, um, go watch a movie, then come back, because I might delve into some of it, if you've never seen one of these videos before. So, let's start out with the positives. One, I, this movie's really funny. A, a lot like a lot of the Ghostbusters movies, maybe not 2016, every single film has a really good sense of humor, like, they're often, they're just really funny at times, and this one's no different. This one is pretty funny. There's a lot of really good jokes and, like, funny character moments in here, especially, uh, fuck, what's his name? It's the guy who brings the orb in, who ends up becoming, uh, I think they say pyrotelic, uh, pyrotenes, pyrotene, pyrokinesis master, or fire master, so he's basically like a firebender from Avatar, and he ends up saving the day at the end. He, he's really funny. Um, a lot of the character moments are really funny. And speaking of character moments, they're handled well, but not as good as in Afterlife. Like, the whole family dynamic, I don't think, is as good as it was in Afterlife, because for a lot of the runtime, um, the main character, Phoebe Spangler, she's not really with the family that much. So the family, whole family connection isn't as great as it was in the previous movie. But another, going to the next positive is, um, the effects are really good. Like, like they're pretty good, especially considering a lot of the movies nowadays have not been having great effects, uh, great digital effects. It's fun. It's, it's nice to see a movie actually having good digital effects, and it's not all digital, there are some practical things in here, I couldn't name the ones off the top of my head, but there are some practical things in this movie, again, I kind of wish they did the whole, the thing with the puppets like they did in the original, but, you know, that's just me, coming my preference, because I enjoy practical effects more, so yeah, the effects are really good, now, um, going into, I think, I think now I'll get into my negatives first off my my biggest problem with this movie is in its villain uh garaka the evil ice god this villain could have been probably one of the best of the series if they utilized him better because for majority of the runtime he's not on screen which that itself wouldn't be a problem because when you look at the original with Gozer, Gozer doesn't show up till literally the last act of the movie. But where it's different between these two is they show the threat Gozer has. Or both of, or like with Vigo and Ghostbusters 2, they show the threat that these two pose. And with Garaka, you don't get a lot of it. So you don't you don't really treat this guy like he's an actual threat because you don't see a lot of the destruction and mayhem he causes and also this is going to spoilers he kind of goes down like a little bitch 
like he comes after he breaks out, which is like almost like just like, like he breaks out of his orb like seventy five percent of the way through the film, and then he kills like one guy, and you like you see him like freeze over stuff, but again it's not like big mayhem like like with Gozer coming in with having Stay Puff come in and actually like doing some kaiju stuff. Or go or with Vigo and the army of ghosts he has when the containment unit breaks in that in Ghostbusters two, or it's just this guy doesn't seem threatening. That's my main problem with him. And again, they take him down so easily. Like there's only like the one action sequence with him is the one the the last one. So again, so this villain does not feel like a threat. This it like this this villain feel the Garaka feels like a villain in the Ghostbusters cartoon more than a main movie villain. Which is such a damn shame because he has a cool design. See what I did there? But yeah, he has a great design and he's so underutilized. And getting to another problem I have with the film is that there's a lot of really cool ideas in this movie, but they just don't get explored enough. Like, I think the most notable example I can give is the Ghostbusters now have, like, this new second site where they can now not only just capture the ghosts, but they can, like, study them. Like, have them in these protective, like, habitats so they can research and study them. And that is a cool idea. So, but it's just not explored enough. And speaking of which, the ghosts they actually have in captivity in in those little cells are awesome. Um, the three are the three ones they got is the possessor. I think it was what it was what Gro Groki or something. What the pu the puker one, and this weird like scary one that looked like it was designed by Trevor Henderson. Like, like these things look are great and probably could have caused some unique situations if the movie f decided to like m focused on them a as if they were like secondary antagonists but the movie really only uses one of them which was the possessor and the sequence with that with the possessor was cool but again the it's, the other ghosts feel underutilized especially considering when you watch the trailer and they mention garaka wants to make this army of the dead or this army of ghosts and then you watch the movie, and it's like, he doesn't even, ha he doesn't even command the ghost. He's just on his own, and, like, you see other ghosts, like, break out, but they don't work together. So, it, like, yeah, it's just, it, there's a lot of ideas so underutilized. I think another underutilized idea this movie has that would have been interesting if, again, if it was expanded more is... There's a ghost that Phoebe meets named Melody that is friendly. Like, and like the idea of having of the Ghostbusters working with a friendly or more cooperative ghost, that it could be something cool as well. In fact, the cart going back, the cartoon did that as well. They, in the cartoon, they had, sl they worked with Slimer, which that cartoon isn't canon, I think. So it's just this. But, again, the idea is just so underutilized and kind of forgettable. So, that's that's my main issue with this movie, is that there's... The villain isn't especially intimidating, and there's just so many half-baked ideas in this that could be cool if they expanded them more. And I think my final negative with this movie is that it doesn't really end. It just stops... Like, they defeat Garaka in the firehouse. Again, again, he goes sounds such like a, like a little bitch. But they do, after they defeat him, it kind of just goes... It goes on for, like, a little bit and then just ends. Like, there's no, like, real conclusion. It just kind of stops. <laughs> like, they defeat him and that's it. <laughs> also, there's some... There's a subplot in here with the town's mayor, who's the same guy from Ghostbusters 2... That where he's trying to shut down the Ghostbusters like into like into that much like it much like in two it goes nowhere so I don't know why the fuck they included it here 
because again, that the subplot with the mayor goes fucking nowhere. But going back into the positives, this movie was fun to watch. As half baked as some of the things in it were, it was a good time. Like I still had fun watching it. Now, granted, I saw it in a 40x theater, so it felt like I was on a roller coaster at the same time. But it's but it it was a fun time. If I were to rank the series from worst to best, I would probably have 2016 in last place. Probably, I'm leaning, I'm probably going to throw, then Frozen Empire, then 2, then Afterlife, then the original. But, yeah, with all that said, um, again, it's not an awful movie, not by a long shot, it's not, it's not awful, but... And you, and if you're a fan of Ghostbusters, you will have a great time with this. I, like, I did. But with the half-baked ideas and the really, and the let, and the unintimidating villain, I'm just gonna have to give Ghostbusters Frozen Empire a 65%. Again, it's not awful. It's a good time. It just, it was disappointing, especially after the, after Afterlife. It was very disappointing. Now, I hope y'all enjoyed the re this review for Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. I'm not going to go a little bit because I want to give some updates for the channel and what I want to do this year. So, we're currently toward, and toward getting towards the end of March. Um, so, and we've only uploaded one video to the channel this year. Which was the Five Nights at Freddy's video. I want to do some bigger videos this year. Maybe not a lot probably a bit more than last year and I want to do more good I want to make my qu content more higher quality than what I've been doing previously and I want to try and make 2024 a great year for this channel but um the reason why I hadn't been uploading since the FNAF video is I needed to get some personal things in order because I'm still in school and um you know, just, I got, I just, I have to do, get some things that will help me in life before I can really focus on this. But this year, I really want to focus on making this, making my content this year be as good as I can pass me. I, I mean, as good as me and my editor and anyone else I work with can make it. That way you guys get a better experience while watching and I'll feel a lot better and not as disgusted watching my own content. Because looking back at some of my older videos, I'm like, what the fuck was I even doing back then? But anyway, that was just a tiny update. I'm probably going to do another review today because I'm, I'm going to be reviewing, trying to get my review for Hasbun Hotel out today as well. That's going to be really late. But hey, anyway, uh, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did, subscribe if you enjoy my content, and I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.